Uh, this is a short video tutorial for chapter 18 of uh, my textbook so let me put this thing in slideshow mode so th the textbook is uh, finite element essentials in 3d experience release uh, 2021 and it's got 18 chapters and uh, the one that we're going to be covering in this tutorial the chapter 18 which is which is named the bare bones static analysis uh, the idea is that if you have a a simple part or a part doesn't have to be simple a part and the part uh, is loaded so that it acts uh, in a linear way so linear material properties and uh, 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 static problem then it's very easy to do this thing using a, a tool called static uh, static study uh, workbench so the problem that I'm going to do for you is shown here very simple. I just put a small twist in it so that you get to see a little trick that is very useful for some problem, many problems in fact. So we have a, a clamp bar here. It's going to be we're going to model it with 3D elements. And by the way, this static study case study study workbench that I'm going to show you works only for uh, uh, solid solid objects with solid elements. Okay, so don't don't try to do beams and shells and stuff like that with uh, with this uh, feature. So uh, the end of this is clamped, and uh, there's a little patch here. I mean, the patch is specified to be some dimensions, and I want to apply a pressure on that patch. I don't want to apply it on the entire face, but on that patch. And by the way, uh, so what I've shown here is that later on when we do the static study, we go into the static study workbench. You look at look at the restraints toolbar they're very limited look at the lows toolbar they're very limited that tells you that basically this is a, a very rough and uh, uh, simple analysis linear analysis of a part nothing complicated and uh, it's good for a, a preliminary uh, uh, on the fly uh, uh, analysis okay so let's go ahead and do this I'm going to put this thing here because I need the dimensions, 60, 200, all right. So on a convenient plane, on that uh, uh, on that plane, I'm going to draw a rectangle, 60 by 200. I think that's where it was, 60 by 200, yep. Yeah. So a rectangle, there. So this is 200, on a millimeter. And this is 60 millimeter. Exit. Exit. And then we pad it. I think the thickness of that thing was uh, uh, 10 millimeters. So we pad it. Where are we? Uh, by 10 millimeters. Very good. Now, on that face, I would like to draw that uh, draw that little patch. And notice that there is no feature on that face. So when I apply a pressure, it's going to take the entire face. So what we like to do is to add a feature there. One way, of course, is to draw a circle and raise uh, and raise it. Uh, you know, which is uh, padded or draw a circle and pocket it by a tiny amount so that it creates a feature. But I don't want to go that route because that changes. The geometry and I'm not really keen about doing it like that so on that face I will sketch a circle and we're going to dimension it in just a second so let's see now what are the dimensions the radius of the circle is 15 millimeters and it's halfway okay so uh, we're going to dimension uh, so that top line control bottom line control the middle uh, the middle uh, Point, which is the center of that guy I'm gonna make it uh, equidistant equidistant did I do that I'm not sure so let's try it again this control that control okay you know what let's leave it like this and dimension it if it's 30 then obviously it works so constraint from here to here this should be 30, 30. 
okay and uh, 30 millimeters and I made sure that this half will try at least to make sure that this is halfway between so if you dimension it it's going to be over constrained but at least it tells us what the value is oh actually so the way I tried to do it I didn't I think I pressed the uh, didn't press okay so 30 millimeter okay all right good good now it's in the right spot so we exit okay now what I like to do is to put a surface here. So in order to talk about surfaces, you can't do it there. So you're going to go to uh, generative uh, shape design, which is right here. I'm going to put a surface on that circle and look for something that's called uh, on the surface. Here's the surface tab and look for fill. OK, and select that sketch. And say OK. So what it did, it actually put a surface there. You can see that. But this surface is not talking to that part. I want to sew that surface. I want to sew that surface to the top face so that uh, uh, it creates a feature. Now, as soon as you say sew it to the, the solid element, obviously you're not going to be able to find it here. Okay. So there, there is probably a sew here, but that's not what I want. Uh, let me see now. Do I have a sew here on there? Let's check, uh, uh, let me see, uh, I don't see it there, I don't see it there, uh, so uh, let's see on the essential, uh, because I'm, I thought I saw a saw in here that basically uh, does a surface to surface, shows a surface to a surface. But that's not what I have, so that's okay. So let's go, let's go to part design, back to part design, and try to find the so. Okay, so let's see now. Under is it under transform, uh, refine. So, so. Oh, there it is. There it is. See that? So surface. Okay, so it shows the surface to a piece of a solid. Okay, so you select it. Okay, so it says uh, object to sew is that patch that we created. Th this arrow must be downward. Okay, so I'm going to uh, flip this. So the two faces basically, the, 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 it means that, okay, sew this to the thing that's underneath it. Is that what it is? And uncheck this uh, simplified geometry. And you say, okay. So when you look at it, now, there is a feature here that we can apply pressure and other things on. Okay. Up to this point, we had uh, nothing to do with that static uh, static case. Okay. Let me apply my material here too, by the way. So while we are here, we're going to go and uh, say apply, apply material. I already had uh, something which was properties of steel, so I'm going to use that instead of creating it. So uh, let's see now. Uh, how about uh, uh, this? This uh, this will okay. Any one of these will actually do it. it really doesn't matter. Uh, how about the steel? Okay, so right click, apply, apply, and uh, we're gonna go and apply it to this part. Get the check mark, green check mark. And always check so I should have the properties that I wanted here so still under simulation all I need is Young's modulus yeah elastic Young's modulus and plus R ratio okay very good so up to this point we had nothing to do with that uh, uh, workbench that I was talking about so now we're gonna go now we're gonna go and look for that workbench if you want to find something just type here search it uh, search and type it so static, ah, right there, you can see that static study. You click on it and wait for that work and workbench to pop up. Okay. Don't, don't worry about this. Don't worry about this message. I think they have to do something about it. The saw has to do something about it. You notice that there's very limited number of things here. For example, if you look at setup, this is for meshing. Okay, 
disinformation. If you look at uh, contact, uh, I, I haven't tried this for contact, but uh, it looks like these are, uh, you know, it looks like these are dim. So I'm not sure whether actually you can do contact here or not. You may be able to do, I'm not sure, but that's not our problem. So on the setup, let's mesh it, okay, right there. By the way, if you forgot to create the material, you can do it from right here. You click on it, and notice that all it says is that you want a fine mesh or do you want a coarse mesh, and depending on where the sliding bar is, uh, it's going to be fine or uh, or coarse. So let's let's make it a little bit finer. So I think the default was 50%. So we say okay. All right, and uh, there's no tree here, as you can see. There's no tree. If you want to see the tree, you have to go back to your part, which is hiding in the background right there. But here, there is no tree. This side, there's no tree. Okay. So, uh, uh, if you want to see your mesh now, so let's see. Right click. Uh, let's look at. Uh, I don't even see the visualization here, but uh, uh, this this is there is a mesh there. If you go to the back, uh, if you go to the hidden hidden uh, surface right there, you can see there is a mesh there, but there is an element there, but uh, you're not. Uh, doing it and in fact if you go here if you go to the part you can see that the finite element mesh was also you know created okay so let me actually see if I can hide this or uh, hide show no we can we probably have to uh, update it somehow um, uh, that's okay let's go back to our uh, our part okay so uh, uh, let me see display I'm trying to show you the mesh here and I'm pretty sure it can be done it's just that uh, I never needed to do this so uh, all right so let's go ahead and apply the restraint restraint so this end is clamped this end is clamped and we apply a pressure uh, a pressure on the loads a pressure on that feature see that it creates the feature and by the way you can flip you can flip the arrow, uh, in the, um, maybe not in this particular workbench, but if this is not the right direction, let me, let me put a number here, so maybe 1,000 uh, Pascal. Okay. Uh, ordinarily allows you to flip it. If you want this thing to be up, so put a minus there. But in many problems, if you flip the arrow here, it'll, it'll, it'll work. But you don't have access to this now. That's pretty much it. So uh, to run it, uh, that's all you have to do. You go to the results, go to the results and run it. I'm going to show you the mesh later on. So very limited kind of things you can do, but it's uh, that's what it's called bare bones static analysis. That's it fancy and uh, if you want to look at other things for example the other entities the displacement and things like that let me see what options do we have here so uh, here this is the animation but uh, uh, let me see if you can plot other stuff uh, this is the scale That is the von Mises stress, so uh, you can do a cut here, but that's not really what I was looking for right there. You can see that you can cut through this and look at the stress distribution. I was trying to get you the displacement. Oh, you're right there. I see that right there. You see that? Let me let me undo this. Uh, let's undo this. So uh, okay. So you see this right there, von Mises. You drag it down you you pull it down you pull it down you can see the deformation not the which is bending you can see that you can see a displacement etc so that's why it's called bare bone uh, bare bone analysis now i also want to show you the mesh how it looked like so let me see in the background we have that in the ah there it is in the background after i run it you can actually see the mesh by the way notice that that patch is respected here because the 
uh, the elements that are arranged so that the, the nodes lie on that uh, face. That's pretty much it. It's useful, but uh, at the same time, not very useful. Good luck.